Alright guys, wanted to go over something that uh, kind of came up the other day as far as training and I think it will help you get more out of your training if we remember why it is we're doing what we're doing. Um, ask yourself this question first, what, what is my purpose for training? Is it to win or is it to learn? Because there's, there's a vast difference between the two. If, if your intent is to win, then you're always going for the tap. If your intent is to learn, then your pursuit is always to grow and get better, regardless. Now, the byproduct of that is, is that I can now begin to make people tap. But if that is my single focus, there's easy ways to get somebody to tap. I can uh, bite somebody. I can, uh, you know, eye gouge. There, there's ways to get people to tap. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to kind of go over this. Uh, this had to do with a discussion that we had, I don't know, uh, a couple days ago or whatever that came up. And it, I, I really had a difficult time explaining it. So uh, I nerded out here and my mind is very analytical. So I went ahead and put it together in, in this form, just kind of using a, a graph. But basically it goes like this. The, you have two fighters here. You have a, a red and a green fighter. And we've broken this up. These are all assets that BJJ guys use. Uh, strength, cardio, technique. I, I just took three simple ones like that. You know, these first two are physicality, and this last one is, is more mental than it is physical. Uh, but the way that the argument went is that this particular black belt had claimed that uh, he didn't like it when people complained that he was using too much strength in order to get the submission that by them saying that it was actually an admission that their technique was not up to par, uh, which I would agree with. But by the same token, the fact that he had to use the strength in order to get the win is also an admission that he lacked the technique to get get the win. So if we look at it like this, let's let's say this guy, you know, this red guy, he, he's a two on strength, um, and the green guy is let's say he's a two on uh, technique. And where you really kind of see this is you see this, maybe the red guy represents a, a big jacked up white belt and the green guy represents a smaller kind of mid-sized blue belt. He's got better technique, but he's just not physically as big. Uh, he's not as strong and, and so on and so forth. And, and we see this a lot in the BJJ gym. Keep in mind that, that this could apply to anything. This, this is strength, cardio, technique for the BJJ matrix, but it could also apply to gunfighting, boxing, and grappling. Uh, it, it could apply to any particular set of assets that the, the warrior or the fighter is using in, in his particular venue. But for this particular case, let's say this red guy is fighting the green guy and he gets a submission, he uses his strength, he uses what is to his advantage to get the win. And that's that's fine. I have no problem with that. Yes, it is an admission that this guy just simply doesn't have the technique to uh, to actually be able to counter his strength. Maybe his technique would have to be a three in order to beat the red guy. But by the same token, it is also an admission that this red guy also does not have the technique in order to beat the green guy. That, that white belt has the strength, but he lacks the technique, and therefore he uses strength to get the win. Now, in the case of white belts, we see this, and it's not uncommon. Um, most times in a BJJ gym, we don't, we don't dwell too much on it because a white belt's a white belt. I mean, they don't know what they don't know. But when it's all said and done, if your purpose is the win and not growth, then what ends up happening, I'm going to remove this so we just got one guy on the board. If my purpose is the win, 
let's say I'm a 2-1 strength, my cardio and my technique are, are both ones. If I'm beating people on strength, I'm just going to continue doing what I'm doing because I'm getting the results that I'm actually desiring. I'm getting what it is I expect to get out of training. I'm winning, and I'm winning on strength. So maybe I continue going to the gym, and I'm up to a two and a half now, and I, you know, I gradually pick up a one and a half. My technique gets a little bit better over time, but I'm spending most of my time working on my strength, and this, this basically kind of represents my, my growth. And I just continue going in this fashion because I'm, I'm accomplishing what I want to accomplish using what I'm already good at. And this goes into, are you that guy who trains his strengths or are you that guy who trains his weaknesses? So if I'm back here and I'm a one, I'm a brand new white belt and I come in and I start doing this and I've been doing it six months. My technique is, is getting a little, a little bit better. I'm up to a two now, my cardio is getting good, and I'm going and I'm competing up against other white belts and and I'm I'm dominating them. But some of these guys are, are strong and some of them are able to hold me down and I continue working my technique because I'm a small guy and my technique continues to get better. Eventually what's gonna happen is, is I'm gonna get to that blue belt level and I'm gonna fight that other blue belt. I'm gonna fight my equal, but that equal is stronger than me. He's going to beat me. He's a three on strength, a two on cardio, and a three on technique. Whereas, I'm a three on technique, a two on cardio, and a one on strength. So, he's going to continue beating me. The point is, is what you want to do is you want to train your weaknesses. If you recognize that strength is your weakness, your technique is good, you're, you're getting this down. When you go against guys uh, who are bigger than you, who have better cardio than you, and you can actually hold your own, maybe even hold your own above your own belt level, but where they really seem to dominate you is when they, they start to apply that strength on you, well then you have to first acknowledge that strength is my weakness. So that means maybe I spend a little bit more time in the gym. And I don't mean gym, I mean you can do the whole bodybuilding thing if you want, but I'm talking like functional exercises, um, CrossFit type stuff, you know, do pull-ups the right way, okay? Don't learn the right technique to do a pull-up wrong, that's just stupid. But the point is, is that I get in there and I focus on what my weakness is. As my weakness, as I begin to train, you'll notice that what happens is, is my weaknesses change. So. I'm continuing to train in the gym, I'm getting stronger, my technique is good, but now, now my cardio is lacking, so now maybe I spend some time on the bike or maybe in the pool, um, I'm working that cardio more, maybe when I go out there and I grapple, I have less rest time, you know, maybe give myself a minute, minute and a half, you know, in between grappling matches so that I continue to work my cardio, and over time my cardio starts to just get better and better. And then all of a sudden, I'm continuing to train in the gym. Now my, my technique is starting to lack a little bit now. So I continue going in this fashion. I continue training. And gradually what happens is, is each one will get stronger and stronger. But it's going to be in a roller coaster type effect. This is the mindset of the individual who is training for progress, not the individual who is training for wins. The guy who is training for wins is going to be dominated by the mindset that I'm always going to train what I'm good at because I'm getting what I set out to accomplish. I'm getting that by doing what I'm always doing. If I'm using strength, I'm getting that by using strength. If I'm using technique, I'm getting that by using technique. The problem is, is that eventually you're going to find somebody who is stronger than you. You're going to find somebody who has better cardio than you. You're going to find somebody who has more technique than you. And you're going to have to rely on these other two assets to be able to make up that gap. So it's not, I don't like to use the term it's a balance because it's not a balance. I cannot continue to train technique and have that be my primary focus as I'm devoting all of my focus to strength. Let me give you an example. When we go in there and we practice a position, 
we go practice position, we're practicing arm bars, okay? So I, I teach somebody how to do an arm bar, they sit down there and they do it. What ends up happening is, is I show this guy how to do it step by step. He follows the steps through on a willing participant. This individual just basically, you know, lays down and just serves as just a grappling belt. And he practices on a willing participant. He's never, the, the guy that I'm teaching has never seen an arm bar before. So I'm teaching him for the first time. I'm teaching him technique. All right? If the mindset is that I can train my technique and my strength, or my technique and my speed, or my technique and my cardio, if my mindset is that I can, I can equally train these two, you can't. Because I can only devote so much attention to one without there being a deficit to other. If I teach this individual this arm bar, he has a willing participant to actually practice on, but what if that willing participant now all of a sudden just starts resisting? He's not going to let him practice the technique. He's not going to let him do anything. Every time he tries to pull his arm up, the guy snatches it down and he escapes mount. Now what ends up happening is, is I have to take that technique that is not yet solidified in my mind and I have to mix it with strength. What's going to end up happening is, is that's going to water down my technique. Alright? Same thing with the strength. It's going to water down there because I'm trying to mix the two together. What ends up happening is, is I have to take, and, and you'll notice that pretty much in any BJJ school you go to, this is the model. You learn a technique from an instructor. He shows you how to do it step by step, multiple times. So you end up with getting a, a mental comprehension of the technique. You mentally can see how it's done. Then I put you with an individual who lets you practice the technique. You begin to practice the technique, and the guy lets you do it. You know, you pull the arm up, and you hold the face, and you rotate the hips, and you get up under the shoulder, and all this. I mean, you're doing the steps step by step, and the guy is letting you did, do it. This is now what we call apprehension, all right? So now you're beginning to apprehend the techniques. First, you mentally comprehend it. Then, you physically begin to apprehend it. There is still another step. It is the final step that we have in the day, in that particular day of training, and that is the two of you guys shaking hands under a time limit and you guys going at it full, full speed, force on force. You begin to start training against each other. When this happens, this is the culmination of you taking comprehension, apprehension, and you turning it into condition response.